The words, I'm sorry and my bad, mean the same thing, except at a funeral. See, context is pretty important. My last project, I designed this lamp to pair with a library ladder, mostly to try out some new techniques. But when the ladder found its new home, the lamp kind of lost its context, and what I thought looked really nice as a pair, now felt like something was missing. Let's do something about that. It's been a little minute, but we're back. This is a very intelligent router. Like most smart things, there's a learning curve and I needed another exploratory project to make all the mistakes on before using this smart thing on my next project. It seems pretty cool. I think the Shaper folks call this a handheld CNC, which is probably technically correct, but I think smart routers may be a little more accurate. By using those little domino strips, it can tell where it is in the world and my arms do the course movement and it takes care of all of the fine detail stuff. Surprisingly, the learning curve has been pretty short, but I'm also sort of a nerd. It should really come in handy for cutting out templates, like we're doing here for this bending form. I've got this really weird aversion and disdain for overhead lighting, and I love boobs, just not when it comes to lights. The exception to this disdain would have to be recessed lighting, but I've got boobs, and if you've got can lights, congratulations. I really think that's the first indicator of being successful in life. Because I'm not wildly successful with recessed lighting yet, I'm a big fan of lamp. You might say, I love lamp. And the part about this project that is actually practice for my next project is that this is a complete loop. And bit elimination is pretty easy until you get past 180 degrees. And that's where the clamping and the pressing gets a lot more precise and technical, and therefore a lot more air prone. If the laminations are too long, you'll get a bubble at the back side of the form. If they're too short, you get a gap where they meet. The next project is a coffee table that might be my most thoughtful and complicated design to date. It's a commission, but then it turned into building two coffee tables, one of which is going to be published in Pop Woodworking, so there's a lot riding on one coffee table. This is where I normally would put in a friendly reminder to subscribe, but you know, I don't think I've showed you anything cool enough to ask for that yet, so just hold your horses. On the bottom of the form, the blocks act as spacers just to give it a little bit of a lift, and the polyurethane bag has enough flexibility to evenly distribute clamping pressure on the vertical walls of the form. And while that cures overnight, I can begin to make the top and bottom structure of the shade that'll actually hold the translucent element. And to do that, I'm simply using a template that I cut out on the smart router and tracing it with a dome one. It's hard to explain how grateful I am to wake up and do what I want and what I love every day. It's honestly really because all of you watching this. And for that, I thank you. If you've been wanting to get into woodworking, either as a side hustle or professionally too, highly recommend checking out this video sponsor, The Business in a Box Playbooks. It's a comprehensive digital cheat sheet that covers everything from furniture to financials and any business questions in between. The creator of this, Nate, he's organized every project and hurdle on his journey to scaling a garage shop into a six-figure business doing what he loves and he wants to teach you. If you want to learn more, check out the link at the end of this video to download a sample and check out the course. In order to counterbore the recess and through hole for the light, typically that would take a lot of fixturing, but not anymore, baby. Some people love making jigs, but that's never been the part of woodworking I've been into. Nothing against those people, that's cool. I just find jigs to be frictional steps in finding the finish line. And right on cue with the frictional steps is a broken screw. Plug cutter makes quick work of that. Oh, I found the coolest pliers. They have like a rounded jaw face on the inside. It's hard to explain. I will link it down below, but they are so handy for grabbing stuff and twisting that like no other tool does well. Anyway, there we have it. Top and bottom shade subframes. As for diffusion, there's a lot of options, but I really like Soji screens and Japanese lamps. So I picked rice paper, but first let's get the body out of the form and out of the way so I can double check my fit. And back by popular demand.
So I laminated a few layers on just the frame itself in order to build sort of a fresh white base. And speaking of fresh white base layers, fresh white, just like these new t-shirts, fresh designs and more colors, including white. Not only are they screen printed on the highest quality tees that don't shrink or fade, but the artwork is all original for my buddy and legendary graphic designer, Chris Rodato. Anyway, those are available for pre-order and the links in the description. I really wanted the subframes to sit proud of the shade structure, but that left a little bit of plywood edge that I just cut some thin strips of veneer to act as edge banding. Now, obviously one side of the shade can stay fixed and that'll probably be the one that supports all the weight. The other side will need occasional access for not only assembly, but if the bulb ever needs to be changed. And in order to handle that little detail, we will be using magnets. I'm a little ashamed to admit, but one of the things I'm most excited about the Shaper Origin is cutting holes at a certain depth, stuff that you can't fit onto a drill press and then I don't have the precise Forstner bit for. Man, that makes it easy. Since I had picked up the rice paper for another design, it wasn't quite wide enough to cover the shade. So I just used a little nori to stitch the pieces together, but I really was not pleased with the seaming when I held the quilted sheet up to the light, so I ordered some wider sheets and used the quilted glue-ups as more base layers. By the way, Nori smells freaking awesome. I was watching this thing on how calligraphy ink is made in Japan the other day, and they explained after mixing and kneading the ink dough with bare feet, perfumes and oils were added into the ink sticks to cover the manufacturing, presumably including but not limited to foot odors. And this had an unexpected value add on the user side. As the professional calligrapher mixed the ink stick with water, it released these pleasant aromas into the room. He spoke of how the smell was meditative, adding to the ceremony and ritual to position his mind in a state of self-expression. It's pretty cool. I love how deeply the Japanese culture respects creation. Maybe tight bond will add a sandalwood scented wood glue line someday. So a few people have reached out lately to make sure I've been okay as I've been pretty quiet on social recently. Good to be missed and thank you, but don't worry. I'm actually really great. I've been working on a bunch of things that I'm not quite ready to share, but they're big and they'll be worth the wait. Just fair warning, content may be a little sporadic the next couple of months because I decided to just not post mediocre bullshit. I just really don't want to waste your time and quality will always take priority over quantity, at least in my shop. If you do want to stay up to speed on those cool things, I put an email sign up on my site where I solemnly swear to never send mediocre bullshit. Check it out while you're buying a t-shirt. I'm really excited to be gearing up to be a little more effective in putting out more of these videos in the future. As for this project, a few takeaways. I'm really loving how the curvilinear shade up top really complements the organic form of the legs below and brings a lot of visual balance to the piece. The rice paper didn't quite dry as flat as I expected and I'll probably redo that at some point, but the light filtering up and down through the shade provides such a nice, soft, warm atmosphere. I'm really loving the mood it sets. The full loop wasn't as smooth of a curve as I had hoped, and there was a couple small buckles. More laminations would help retain the shape, and this was a trade-off in weight that I knew I was making going into it. The subframe does its job in restoring the roundness, and I have a few- Really guys, turn to work here. And I have a few ideas for a closed loop on the next no, project. No, no, Okay, fine. The elimination of superfluous jigs and speeding up workflow with Shaper Origin has been really fun. 
Makes a ton of sense for speeding up the process in my little shop. After turning the light in a few places, it found a nice spot next to a little reading chair. And before you go, be sure to check out Business in a Box Playbooks using the link in the description below, where you'll also find everything else discussed in the video. All right, that's it. Catch you on the next one. Peace.